and you can provide the future for them, and that's what the, the role of this government should be. I am looking for a full report on the housing and homeless situation in Donegal, including the number of people in receipt of RAS in Donegal and the number of pe people in receipt of HAP, to report on the emergency homeless accommodation in the county and the number of demographics of people accessing this accommodation, the, and the number of people on social housing waiting lists in the county as well, indicating the type of accommodation and the length of time they are waiting. And that will actually be a false figure as well too, because this, the people who earn more than €25,000 a year can't even get on the social housing list, and they haven't a whole hope of providing themselves with housing and then also in Donegal because landlords don't want to be included in the HAP programme they don't they can't get rented accommodation either so it's a crisis right across the board that's, that's affecting people there. I also, I also asked about the amount of funding provided to Donegal County Council for Housing in recent years. This information should be re readily available on the government's website and everyone should be able to access information, policymakers, advocates, civil society organisations, deputies, media, etc. Et Why is this information not easily available? I think that's important. Unfortunately, we can't believe the homeless statistics provided by the government. Figures were being recategorised to hide the real and distressing extent of the crisis. We know that the number of people and children in domestic violence, refugees and de direct provision centres are not included in official homeless data, despite the fact that this type of accommodation is temporary and the housing crisis is, ex is exacerbating access to move on options. I have asked the Minister for Children, Equality, Disability, Integration and Youth to report how many people and children in domestic violence refugees in Donegal in each year of the, of the years 2017 to date, to report the number of domestic re violence refugee places in Donegal compared to the recommended number of refuge places, the refuge capacity per county and plans to increase access across the island. I have I also asked the Minister how many people and, uh, people and children are in direct provision accommodation in Donegal in each of the years 2017 to date. We are due to have 60 new neighbours coming to Letterkenny soon and I understand that there will be children with these families. I would like to see the families be empowered to shop in the local community and have agency and choice on where they use their food vouchers. It will help for a smoother integration into the local community also. This direct provision centre is self-catering and own door but is still not secure and permanent housing. Earlier this month, Linda Hayden of the PAC Woman Pod held a live podcast panel discussion on the impact of homelessness on health. A theme of the podcast was the huge rise in women experiencing homelessness, especially young women and particularly traveller women. Women experiencing homelessness are at an increased risk of sexual violence and physical violence and over 60% of families experiencing homelessness are single parent families. What female specific policies are being implemented by your department to address this growing trend? Another important point raised in this podcast was how bad consecutive governments have been in implementing strategies. You all love a good photo op and a, glo a glossy document, but the actual implementation that will take, make tangible difference to people's lives, that's one of the areas where, where you and every government, unfortunately, is significantly lacking. When will people experiencing homelessness and those working and volunteering in this area receive their vaccinations is another question. In the first wave of the pandemic, the organisations working with people experiencing homelessness were commended for the low number of cases in hostels and shared accommodation. People were given single rooms where possible and an improved type of accommodation for people experiencing homelessness was provided. If we did it during the pandemic, why can't we do it now? People with addic addiction issues were more likely to have underlying health conditions and therefore be more vulnerable to COVID as well. Vulnerable and marginalised groups should be prioritised for allocation of vaccinations right across the board, including those with, with health vulnerabilities as well. I would like to commend the Irish Examiner journalists Noel Baker and Ryan O'Rourke and Aoife Grace Moore for their work on bringing the names and human stories to the horrifying statistics of those dying on our streets. The Minister says it's, it's not reported properly. In the Examiner's special report, the faces and stories behind the homelessness death printed earlier this week, these three journalists brought some humanity to the people. There was also news that you were looking at recategorising homeless figures again, Minister. That's so recategorise your thinking on, on data, Minister, would be more, make more sense. As you walk around town to your office or to get a coffee, if you see a person on the street, look them in the eye and acknowledge them as you walk by them. See them, look into their eyes as you pass and categorise them as a vulnerable human beings with rights, lives, histories and hopefully futures. And you can provide the future for them and that's what the, the role of this government should be to make sure that that happens. Thank you.